Well, good morning, guys. Welcome back to the build of the Huracan aircraft from Aerocar Control. Welcome to the wing episode. We've got lots of cool things happening in this episode, focused all on the wings. So we've set the fuselage aside, we've pulled out these massive wings. So hang tight and we will get going. All right guys, so we're dealing with the wings in this episode and uh, first thing we're gonna start off with is mounting the awesome lights that were designed by Ozzy from Ozero Custom and uh, outfitted with uh, the lighting from Sky Candy Landing Lights. So that's gonna be the first step in this video. So because of that guys, let's do a giveaway. All right, so what we're gonna do in this episode, we're just gonna get it out of the way right at the beginning. We're gonna give away a set of Sky Candy landing lights, which are about $100 US value. Uh, you can decide whether you want the 7 8 or the one inch size. And also included in that is gonna be a digital switch, which, which powers the whole thing and, and makes it possible to run them. So what you need to do to enter this giveaway is, like the video, that's step number one. You gotta like the video. You have to be a channel subscriber, so hit that subscribe button down below. And the third thing is add a comment down below in this video. The winner is going to be chosen from the comments listed down below. So give the video a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button, and make a comment. Doesn't matter what the comment is, you could say sky candy, you could make a nice big long comment, doesn't matter, but the winner is gonna be chosen from the comments. So what we'll do is about a week from when this video airs, we will do a update in one of my other videos on whoever won this video. So thank you Sky Candy for donating the lights to give away to you guys, the viewers, and uh, thanks for watching. All right guys, so we got one of the wings on the table. This is the right wing of the aircraft and we've set the mass of Huracan aside there. So first step that we're gonna be focusing on here is installing the lighting setup in the leading edge of the wings. Now, a common thing that I see in the comments is you guys being like, oh my gosh, how can you cut into a brand new plane? Generally, I'll tell you, I am not usually worried about this. Uh, I'm actually pretty stressed out about this and I think the reason I'm stressed out about this is because there's no give in this shape, right? So I probably shouldn't be so worried, but I am actually worried, but uh, I know Ozzy at Zero Custom has done an amazing job designing these things and they're going to work great. So it's mainly just a matter of figuring out where we want to mount these things. So as I showed in the last video, we got these templates and uh, basically the templates slide over top like this and we just pin them down and then we can draw out our cutouts. Now I think the leading edge of this wing is pretty universal as far as size go. It does get a little bit girthier I think uh, at the root of the wing but uh, I think where I want to mount these things is right in line with this last red stripe. I think I've, I spent a bunch of time thinking about this yesterday and I think that's exactly where I want to mount it. So, big step coming up. I'm gonna put this molding or uh, cutout piece on there. I'm gonna get some pins uh, that you'd normally use when you're putting, uh, when you're building a balsa aircraft. Pin that in place, mark it out with a Sharpie and start cutting. All right, so I have installed the guide, pinned it all in place. Next thing I'm gonna do is just take a Sharpie marker and mark out the cutout area. So I don't know if I can fully convey how stressed out I am or nervous I am about cutting into this perfectly good wing, um, but I am. So I'm gonna use a saw, a little Zona saw, to cut this out. 
Let's do this. Well, it's cut out. Now I just gotta peel that thing out. All right, well that's what it looks like once you get the piece removed. So this is the uh, rib that comes all the way down the leading edge or just behind the leading edge. And that's what our structure looks like on the inside. That opening there is for the aileron servo. So we have a couple things to think about here. Um, I'm not entirely sure, we'll have to see, that we can get this light housing in with this backwards angle. So that is going to be maybe a bit of a problem. Um, we'll have to see if we can get that in. If we can get it in, that's awesome. If not, I think the light housings will need to be redone. Uh, so they go forward like this to follow this angle so they can just slip in. But we'll see. Maybe we can make it work once the structure here is gone. So. Couple things to think about. We have to get rid of some of the structure here. And uh, when we get rid of some of the structure, we probably are gonna have to reinforce that area. Um, the next structure back is about here. And um, so we'll see, I'm gonna give that some thought. But uh, just uh, pondering here, what we're gonna do next. Next thing I think is gonna be to cut the, uh, the rib out there. All right guys, well, I've been uh, playing around and kind of hacking with this wing for quite a while. And unfortunately, because of this angle, like I talked about, uh, these lights will not work in their stock format. So unfortunately, that is one of the problems with being the first. Whether you're the first builder of an aircraft, the first installer of a set of lights, uh, the test pilot for a brand new full-size aircraft, um, you're gonna run into hiccups. So. Like I've said on the uh, before in my other videos, guys, I will share my successes and failures with you. Now, this isn't necessarily a failure, but uh, obviously we have to get these lights redone. Now, I've been sending pictures to Ozzy at his Aereo Custom, and uh, he's aware of, of where we're at with this. So uh, the fit is really, really nice, but I think that um, the lights need to be redesigned a little bit on that that inside angle. So, but otherwise, they are they're going to be really cool. So. Uh, I'm just going to send a bunch of pictures to Ozzy now and we'll see what uh, what's going to happen. Alright guys, so that's kind of the final thing that we can do right now at this point. Um, I've sent a bunch of pictures to Ozzy and uh, we're going to see what uh, the solution is going to be. My hope is that he can just adjust this angle. Uh, I've sent him a picture of the new angle here. So that's my hope. We'll see what happens. Either way, I know he's gonna get it uh, get it solved and this light setup is gonna be amazing. And if you're getting this light setup for your Huracan, uh, it's gonna be a lot easier for you to install. Now, we've taken a lot of structure out of the wing tip here. So that's something we're gonna have to definitely figure out and replace. So basically now um, there's nothing supporting this portion of the wing. So once the light housing goes in, it's obviously gonna tie this all together, but I don't wanna go crazy gluing that light housing in in case we do ever need to uh, take it apart, which I don't think we will. Um, but, so what I'm gonna, probably gonna end up doing is I'm gonna build another structure kind of following this, uh, this cutout. So we're gonna have a piece going across like this, and then it's gonna come back and tie in to the rest of this rib. So that'll, uh, that should solve the problem with the light housing in place and that extra uh, rib piece, we should be, uh, should be good. Just wanna take a second out of this video and thank you guys who have donated to the Shop Build Fund. Thank you so much for your donations. At the time of recording this video, we are just shy of the $3,000 mark, which 
absolutely blows my mind. I have a very lofty goal, but at least we've gotten started and uh, we've collected some great funds to help build the new shop. So thank you to everybody who's donated. We do appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right guys, so we're still gonna plug away on this wing, even though we're waiting on the, the headlight fix um, from Ozzy. So I have sent those back and uh, just waiting on um, the replacements or whatever he ends up doing. So I'm not gonna worry about the structure on this as we, uh, we talked about previously. So once I get the new headlight, uh, then I will create the new structure. So we're just gonna keep plugging away on this wing and, uh, and get it all complete. So next thing we're gonna do is install the wingtip marker lights. And uh, it's actually nice having this big wide open area to actually see what's going on inside the wing over here. So anyways, um, let's go over how and why to install these where I'm installing them. All right, so because our marker lights have a flat back, we wanna make sure we put them in a fairly flat spot. So if you put them on the leading or kind of the near the front of the wing here, um, not ideal because it's got a big angle to it. So what I'm thinking about is right in this area right here. So basically the back of the marker light, we're gonna have right on that white transition right there, or a better way to think about it is right on the hinge line of the aileron itself because that's a fairly flat spot right there and we'll have lots of good contact and it'll uh, it'll sit nicely against there so basically what i do in this situation is we're just going to mark the main output line for this marker light now all of the uh the high intensity or full scale aviation stuff uh, it's all got three wires or four wires actually now the reason is these are connected together on all of the lights or both of the lights and it keeps them in sync. So it's a synchronization wire. So again, that's all part of Sky Candy's uh, uh, full light setup that uh, Sal puts together. So we'll just uh, mark this output light right there on the center portion and we'll drill that hole with, uh, with my awl and uh, it should be fairly simple to mount this. Now, the biggest thing is just have a, having something to screw into. So we'll see if going into the fiberglass reinforced with some CA works well. If it doesn't, we've got good access back there and we may have to put some either globs of high saw or uh, some, some wood back here to screw into. So that's kind of a trial and error thing. All right, so that worked out quite well, actually. And when I drilled the holes through, we were basically drilling right through the joint of the two halves of the wing. So there's a nice solid uh, glue fillet there to drill into and uh, worked out good. So don't need to do anything further on this and uh, the wing tip marker light worked out great. So we've got our servo lead inside there. So all I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna make up a connector that's gonna go on to that. And I'm gonna feed that to the root of the wing uh, and come out the opening right there. All right, so this is definitely one of the easiest large wings that I've ever had to wire up. Uh, there's so many different angles and access points and everything. So all I was doing was taking my large wire going straight through here and basically getting a straight shot right to the aileron servo area and from there i can go to the wing or the wing tip i can go to the that light the aileron so insanely easy uh, so we've got three lines run already so that's the aileron line uh, light number one which is the main front light light number two, which is the wingtip marker light. So those are all run. Uh, I'm just gonna put some servo connectors on there, some female connectors, and uh, that's gonna be it. All right, so um, here's a special request. So you guys were asking, how do I do the power box ends? So when you do a normal servo end, and also a, what I call a female end, but I think they're called reversed. Uh, you're basically doing the same thing. 
you just put your wires together differently. Okay, so I'll, I'll show you guys how I put one of these power box connectors together and uh, let's go. So basically you need all the parts and three pins. So that's what you'll need to put together the, the female connector, but uh, I'll show you guys the male connector first. So I use these Klein wire st uh, strippers, uh, the red and the blue wire, so red and black, or positive and negative. I use the second notch. And the white one, use the first notch. Now it's quite important when you're doing the power box wires and any of these wires that you don't strip too much off. So that's about three millimeters. So you're looking for two to three millimeters is what you are after. Hopefully I can pick it up there. Anyways, so that's what you're after. I give them a twist to tighten them up. There, so now I'll use my crimpers, two clicks. Okay, and it's sitting there in the first spot, so that's two clicks, so there's still plenty of room to actually get your wire in there. And we need trusty bent screwdrivers help here. So the connector is quite simple. There's basically two parts to the connector. There's the larger part right there, and the wire crimp right here. So when you put this in, you basically want your wire to come to about there. This first crimp should crimp all your wire. This second crimp is crimping the sheeting. So if you cut too much of the sheeting off, then the second one's also gonna crimp the wire and it's not gonna be supported very well. So all I do when I do this is put the wire through, look on the other side, Get it lined up and give it a squeeze. And that one worked out perfect. So you can see the housing there is crimped in the first part. The second part is just the wire. So now we'll do that for all three. Okay, so this is where it gets um, a little bit tricky. Not really once you've done it a few times, but so you want the open end, okay? You want that facing towards you. Okay, so if you're making it as this type of connector, you've got the open pieces towards you. Okay, you wanna go white, red, blue. Okay, so signal, red, uh, positive, and negative. If you're doing this as this type of connector, you wanna reverse that. Okay, so open end towards me, I wanna go white, red, blue. So I wanna do this as this type of connector. So white, red, blue. So we just push those in until they click. And the power box stuff works very well. Just like that. Um, I think the little instruction book booklet that comes with it, it says to put a little piece of shrink tubing on there. I've never done that, uh, but I guess you can. And then all you do is insert the pins and then when you put this together, there's these three little dots on there. And there's the open section right here. So those three little dots go towards the open section first, like this. And that is what I call the female connector. And then I know this is flap, so I'm just gonna write flap on there. And that is how I put together my power box servo wire connectors. All right, so connections like this, this is the wingtip light. Uh, what I do is I take a piece of, I think 3 8 shrink wrap. I actually buy this in a big roll and basically just uh, shrink wrap that together and it doesn't come apart unless you want it to. So uh, we're gonna get the wingtip light hooked up first and then we're gonna start working on the ailerons and the flaps and mounting the gear. All right, tip time for you guys. Tip time. Uh, when you are putting your servos in, make sure you don't use the length 
on the servo cable itself to go into the wing. So if we did the connection here, pulled this wing wire back, now if you ever have to replace that servo and your length of wire at the root of the wing is fixed, you are not gonna be able to pull that line out. So always uh, bunch up your servo cables here. Make sure there's enough slack to be able to get the servo out and change the, or have access to the connector if you ever need to change that servo. This tip time has been brought to you by Trusty Bent Screwdriver. All right guys, so aileron servo has been installed there it is so we used a 32 millimeter servo horn uh, which is an inch and a quarter so this has the one inch hole but we're using the outside hole which is inch and a quarter 32 millimeters and that's uh, matches up with the height on the uh, the aileron uh, quite nicely and then we're going to use a one inch servo horn i believe in the flap so servos all installed, it was a little bit tricky. Um, I use a combination of a couple tools here so you can get most of these holes uh, with the pin vise uh, from this angle, that's fine. We also have this nice opening at the front of the wing for the, the light, so you got great access there. And you can also use um, this tiny little uh, little tighten tool so it's basically just a little mini ratchet you can also fit a drill bit in there like that and that actually gives uh, enough space to fit in the opening so that's the combination of, of tools i use to install those servos um, i also used the screws that come with the jr servos which are great because they're larger in size more aggressive thread uh, two and a half millimeter uh, head on them so that's what we're using to install all of our servos. All right, so I've got my first wing connector done up and you can see you just plug the servo lead in there, obviously making sure that your polarity is 100% correct because there's no uh, stopping that if you screw it up. So anyways, I've got this 10 foot uh, servo lead here. Oh, and uh, that plugs in to the appropriate output port. Uh, the reason I have this is just for working in the shop. So situations like this, when I've got the plane sitting here, I've got the wing sitting there, and we need to plug stuff in, and this is just my, my shop servo lead. So now with that servo plugged in, it is centered, and we can now do up our linkage and get the aileron surface centered, and we'll be happy. All right, so we are all finished on the aileron surface on the right wing. So the specs call for 15 millimeters of down travel, which is that, 12 millimeters of up travel, which is that, and to get that I added 12% of aileron differential and that got me uh, 12 up, 15 down. So uh, it doesn't seem like a lot of travel, but if you've flown something like an ultra flash as an example uh, with much smaller surfaces than these guys uh, doesn't take a lot of movement so that uh, is a pretty big surface and that's a decent amount of movement so got my initial movement on this surface by adding dual rates so I basically have a 40% dual rate 25% expo added in there and I don't fly any of my jets with rates with multiple rates on them. So basically it's it's set and that's it. Um, with a gyro, usually what I'll do is I will, uh, on the gyro off, once I get everything dialed in and I'm happy with it, like the diamond as an example, uh, when the gyro's off, I've got more expo in there. So let's say the gyro offsetting in, on this plane might be 25%. And then when the gyro's on, I'll generally reduce that by about 15 to 20%. Uh, on a bigger plane like this, you could just turn it probably completely off. So those are those tuning things that you need to do on the first uh, first flights. So anyways, that surface is done. And my cover here is uh, just a simple cutout. Didn't need to be very excessive because there's not a lot of, uh, of travel on that servo arm. Now, I was thinking 
I might be able to drop that linkage down to the next hole down. The problem is it does get very close to the skin or the cover. So I'm probably just gonna keep it at the inch and a quarter setting and be happy with it. And I also I listened to your guys' advice and put washers on there. So I don't run a lot of ball links that are only single side supported. Uh, so this is quite new for me. So I did uh, put a washer on there as was suggested. Uh, double side, I've dealt with lots of those. Single side, uh, we have a washer on there. And I will go back and do the other surfaces on the aircraft as well. All right, so now we are working on the flap servos. So basically something to think about here is uh, the position of the servo arm. So generally when you're working with flaps, you're not working with the middle position. And I'll show you kind of where I'm set here now. I've got flap throws set up and they're pretty extreme, but that's full flaps. That's mid stick or zero. And that's flaps off. Okay, so that is our mid stick position or mid switch position and uh, we're not centered here at 90 degrees we're offset so what i've done is i've gone to full flaps we've equaled both of these servos so we've adjusted the midpoint to work so they're both identical now the flap servos are going to be set up on the x bus system so we've got complete adjustability with the flap servos. So that's our servo set up there, so happy with that. Now the other thing I like to do on a build like this is I'll just take my um, calipers here and basically come up with the full travel of the flap, which is in this case 100 millimeters. So 100 millimeters there, so it's hard to show you this and film it, but basically I've got it set so where I'm holding it with one hand it is at exactly where it needs to be. And then I'll take my angle finder, put it on the actual flap, and then what we can do is we've got the angle of the flap. So now I know the angle of where that needs to be, and basically if we're flat, we're at 180 degrees, and our full flap travel is basically 55 degrees right there, so we're at 125. So now when I'm setting this up, it's easy to know where my full flap travel is supposed to be when I'm dealing with the linkage and everything. And I can also measure uh, between the two different uh, wing surfaces. So. so now with the travel on the flap sorted out, the servos themselves sorted out, we can install the one servo into the wing and then we can work on the linkage setup. Now this is also using a one inch servo horn. We may be able to go shorter but uh, we will have to either drill this hole out to be a little bit larger for the three millimeter allen key to fit through um, and if that's the case and we're having any rubbing on the top skin of the wing then we may put the hole a little bit closer to the base but we're going to see how that works out for travel. Okay guys, so a couple considerations here with the flap linkage system. So right there where the rod passes through that former in the wing, uh, we don't wanna be making that any bigger than we have to. So the goal here is to keep that um, undisturbed. There's already a nice sizable hole in there and we just wanna leave it the way it is. So right now, if we're gonna try and keep that one inch if we're going to try and keep that one inch servo horn, the problem is that the hole is down too low. So we actually need to make the hole for the linkage to be kind of in the middle of the J is what we're looking at. Okay, so that's what we, one thing that we need to do. So just to give you a shot here, that's where the one inch hole is. We need the hole to be in the middle of the J is kind of my rough estimate. All right, so I went a different route with the servo arm here. Uh, this is the JR one, and you can see that the, uh, the gold one here, uh, which is a Seacraft uh, 19 millimeter one, that's what I ended up using. So lengthwise, I think this is gonna be the perfect length. It lines up right in the middle of the J, which is where we needed to be. So we've gone this route. Now these were a two millimeter hole. I drilled them out, so we, our bolt, three millimeter bolt will actually fit in there tightly. 
So that should work out better. Uh, the other thing is with the Seacraft arms is they're positioned on the outer edge versus the JR one. So it actually should be better as far as lineup goes with that arm. Now one thing I'm not a huge fan of with the Seacraft arms is just this blank area, but um, it should be plenty strong enough to hold the ball and uh, linkage and everything. And also I actually tried to take this and bend it sideways and this is a really stiff aluminum so should be no problems. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get this linkage all set up and we'll see how it works out with the flaps. Alright guys and this is what I don't like about these Seacraft arms as I was kind of talking about before and this is the reason I'm going to change this. So we're at full flaps right now and you can imagine putting some force on the surface when you're at full flaps and there is just a bunch of deflection sideways because there's not a lot of supporting material in that servo arm. So I am not going to keep those on there. Fine if this is a smaller surface, but I'm not happy with that. So we're going to take the JR ones and we're going to drill those ones out at uh, 19 millimeters and uh, replace them again. All right, guys, we got the flap all figured out. So went back to the helicopter days and I had some of these Align helicopter servo horns, which are going to work great. So the nice thing about them is they're very thick and they are designed to have the ball on the end. So they're designed to deal with a lot of side to side force. Now there's no pinch bolt, uh, which is fine. We can deal with that, but uh, should work out great. So zero flaps is set up here. Full flaps is set up there and the linkage comes directly in line with that arm. Now the benefit of doing it this way is that at this point the shaft is taking the force, the bearings or the motor, sorry the motor is not taking the force. If you have your full flap set up there, now the servo is trying to resist the turning force uh, when there's pressure on the flap. So not always possible to set it up like that, but just something to keep in mind. So before we put this servo arm on, because there's no pinch bolt, we put a little bit of Loctite on all those splines and of course some on the, the set screw as well too. So this servo arm is 18 millimeters to the inner hole, which is the one we used. The Seacraft one was 19 millimeters. So because of that, we did lose four or five millimeters of travel on the flap at full travel. So we're supposed to be shooting for 100 millimeters. We got 95, which I don't think is a big deal. So here's what the flap looks like. So that's flap off, take off flap, Landing flap. So lots of travel there on that massive flap. And this is what the, uh, the servo itself looks like. Okay, so there is flap off, takeoff flap, landing flap. So you can see there the linkage is basically straight in line. So I always find with flaps, it's a bit of messing around to try and make everything work properly and once we get to the other wing, it's a matter of trying to match that wing up, but we've matched the servos up very, very closely, so it should be a lot easier when we move into the other wing. So next video will probably be a little bit of the wing, and we're going back to the fuselage to kind of hopefully get things wrapped up. So anyways, guys, don't forget the giveaway of the Sky Candy landing lights in this video. If you forgot what you need to do, you need to give the video a thumbs up. You need to be a channel subscriber and you need to make a comment to this video in the comment section down below. Doesn't matter what your comment is, but make a comment. And that's how you enter the giveaway for the Sky Candy landing lights. So about a week from when this video airs, we will be doing the draw in the next video for the lights. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. We appreciate you supporting the channel. Thank you for, uh, for joining us on this build of the Huracan. Anyways, guys, we will see you in the next video. Take care.